Hello everyone, I'm Lisa Boson and welcome to It's Your Season Life and our Colorado kitchen. It is May and it's absolutely gorgeous outside. It's going to be beautiful all week long. And we're all scrambling trying to figure out how to get outside, social distance, have some fun. So what I'm suggesting today is we're going to uh, travel up the Poudre River to one of our favorite picnic grounds called Picnic Rock. And, uh, and Diamond Rock, one of those places, depending on what's open, and having a picnic, and we're going to do a staycation picnic. This spring we were supposed to go to Provence, uh, didn't quite make it, had to reschedule that one. So, but we can always have a Provence picnic here, so we're going to show you how to do that. Also, we're going to do this with just things out of our refrigerator, and also with some spices and some local ingredients, so I want to share those with you as well. When we think of going on a picnic, we always think of like a sandwich, and sometimes when we go on a picnic, we just throw together some peanut butter and honey, and we're on our way with some bananas and call it good. But sometimes we need something a little special, especially in times like these. How do we make the ordinary a little extraordinary? So this is what we're going to do today. We're going to have open face sandwiches. We're going to use my husband's sourdough bread. It's been very popular. We've given away over 30 starters on next door. So wonderful. Some of the folks have been uh, sharing their sourdough and it's been great. So we're going to show a different technique with that. I have some leftover potatoes, purple ones, my favorite, and some whites because we're going to do something different with those. I have two tomatoes. Who doesn't have those? Some leftover chickpeas. You can do more than hummus with a, with a sandwich. And these are from EP Greens. This is their mild mix of uh, different kinds of superpower greens. So we're going to use those. And then we're going to make this absolutely wonderful by using different spices from the Spice and Tea Exchange. Okay, so I have my little bag of spices. And so one thing we think about with plant-based is how to make things special. So we're going to make things extra special, give it a little France touch, maybe a little Mediterranean for lunch today, and have a super picnic on the pooter. Say that five times. So stay with me. So I really wanted this to be an easy picnic and things that we were bringing from home. So as I stated, we're going to start with some potatoes and some other things. But I also, uh, what makes our vegetables and our dishes interesting is spices. And it really takes us on a journey. So yeah, we'll take a minute and look and see what you have in your spice cabinet and see how you can enhance your dishes. Then look to see what you have in your pantry already at home with a plant-based pantry. I absolutely love these Healthy Harvest Kalamata olives, and even though they're not exactly French, they're Mediterranean, they are wonderful. They have a wonderful umami and saltiness, and after you've had these, you probably won't have any more canned black olives in your refrigerator. I kind of searched around and found some fruit, so we'll have this for our plant-based dessert of some berries and grapes. And then uh, I moved on um, to create the first potato dish. So one thing that you will have in your uh, plant-based kitchen is Instapot steamed potatoes. 12 minutes steam in an Instapot and you can have baby potatoes ready to go for anything, even just snacking. So all I did here, I started out with a fork and just started smashing these baby potatoes, these Dutch babies Yukons that I had in the refrigerator and then I kind of progressed to keep smashing them up and I thought well they, they will be good with the black truffle salt from the spice shop so that was that just pull them together and then put them in a container and move on to the next dish so this is a kind of a smashing kind of lunch as well so I went to the purple potatoes and I absolutely these are beautiful they add color they're going to have different vitamins because they're uh, colorful and so with these again I kind of cut them in quarters and started smashing them with a fork you don't see it here but I actually started smashing them with my hands as well and all I added to these because I wanted to keep the color and just keep the beauty of the purple is add some tomb which is basically mayonnaise without um, egg it's emulsified garlic you can get it at the Fort Collins farmers market from shock and who had, this will be in the, um, 
information below, but you'll get it from shocks. I just mashed those up, kept mashing, mashing, and just kept them kind of coarse. I didn't want to get the food processor out and have something else to clean up. So I thought, what can I do with a fork and my hands, just like they did kind of in the old days. And then the next dish was the chickpeas. So this is the mirepoix from the spice shop that I mixed with a little bit of the aquafaba, that liquid that's left over from the chickpeas. So I drained a can of chickpeas uh, a couple of days ago. I kept both the peas and the uh, aquafaba, the liquid from the can. And so I softened up the mirepoix with that. And then I went to town mashing up those leftover chickpeas. And yeah, started with a fork with my hands and then it felt kind of cool feeling how the consistency of the chickpeas was changing. So uh, yeah, kept, kept mashing them up, added the mirepoix and yeah, kept mashing and here we go. I wound up with a timbale. So or timbale, I think is how you say it, T-I-M-B-A-L-E. This is one of my favorite techniques. It's a garlic grater. Um, you can find them online on Amazon. They used to be at a lot of craft fairs. They've got sharp little teeth. It's one of my quickest, easiest. You grate it up. Hopefully not get your fingers in there. Add a little bit of olive oil and just let it sit for just a little bit. Maybe just like a piece. So after it's sit for, you know, a few minutes, depending on how much time you have, you have nice little olive oil. You can kind of take a, a spatula and just grate it a little bit. You're really just trying to get the enzymes out of the out of the uh, garlic. Then we're just going to put it into a bowl. We're going to add a little bit of the seasoning from adobo seasoning from the spice and tea exchange. This is going to be stupid easy. We're just going to mix it up a little bit. And then we're just going to put it into our picnic tomatoes and on our way to the uh, picnic ground on Poudre River, they will marinate and just be a wonderful little topping to put on top of these other things that we're going to show you in just a little bit. And that And so just to give you an idea, I chose the sourdough slices with toasted before we came with chickpeas and microgreens and the tomatoes and the capers and potatoes, the purple potatoes and microgreens and tomatoes. And then my husband chose the purple potatoes with chickpeas and microgreens and more chickpeas and microgreens. And this is all things that you can have in your kitchen if you're plant-based and you don't necessarily have to have a sandwich that's ham and cheese and mayo and all kinds of things that rank themselves up to over a thousand calories, lots of saturated fat. So here's a picture of my plate and we'll talk more when we get home. So our third open face sandwich. I went with the um, baby yellow Dutch potatoes that had the truffle, French truffle uh, spice mix with more tomatoes and the roasted capers and microgreens from EP Greens. And so you can see now we're going into it's almost dessert time with some fresh fruit little EP green shout out there and yeah more vegetables that you can just eat with your fingers that's the best part of this so I'll be posting um, on this as well how much protein is in this plate and fat and then look at all those beautiful phytonutrients so be sure and make your plate colorful that's the point of kind of holding this still for just a moment is really making it colorful, making it easy, making things that, using things that you have in your, in your plant-based pantry. So one thing to think about when you think about Provence is that we, originally we think it's French. Yeah, it's French, but it's also on the Mediterranean. So it, it, there are a lot of Mediterranean influences from Spain, from the Middle East, from Italy, and of course France. 
So chickpeas, for example, are universal. You'll see these a lot in the uh, Nice area, making crepes and then using them just as we did for just mashing them up. And then, so we used a blend of spices today. We used spices from France, a spice blend from Italy, a spice blend that was kind of Middle Eastern, Spanish, just to give us that flavor. But look how beautiful that is. Don't you just want to enjoy that? And one more pass through on our, on our beautiful spot. So I hope you come out and have a Provence Pouter picnic this summer. So hey, thanks for joining me today and, and sharing our Provence picnic on the Pouter. So how to do something different than just a regular burger, a sandwich, um, a burrito, just some different ways just to take pause, enjoy some beautiful food, and enjoy some wonderful scenery. So be sure and support our farmer's market where we got some of our produce today as well as our local um, spy shops, um, the co-op on Mountain, all those wonderful places that we get our local foods and spices. So thanks for joining me. Be sure and click subscribe so that you will get notification when the next video comes available. Otherwise, thanks so much for joining me. We look forward to seeing you in the next video.